Oh shit, I can't believe it. I just got a three star Laura. Oh fuck. Oh, how many did you have to open to get that? Um, I mean, I got a lot of Larry's, but no Barry's, weirdly. No, no, no um, Barry's. Yeah, I've opened several thousand of those. I've, uh, I've had a lot of uh, Chad's, but no Rick's. Oh, that's weird. I've I've had a lot of um Sherry Lady One, but not Sherry Lady Two. Oh, okay. I I mean, I could probably trade you a Sherry Lady Two. Okay. Well, I mean, I I we could probably make a complete set. Yeah. Yeah, I think between us, maybe. I mean, has anyone seen seen even a one star Jane? Oh, I I did get one five star Crystal Jane. A five star Crystal Jane. Yeah, yeah. I it's see. one of the sort of transparent ones that's like oh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's got yeah, all sparkles yeah. in it. It's it's it is it is clearly the best pull I've had. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll we'll open this box because this is like the skits box okay and you get okay. like a whole bunch of, of like usually supposed to be at least one tier higher than your highest current okay. skit i've got another chad another chad another chad oh wait there's a rick there, 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 that, that is a one star bronze rick with just awful stats i mean i mean look i don't think i don't think I don't think it would be a good idea for these two to know the apparent rarity disparity they have. Yeah. They just seem to think they're a pair of fucking geniuses. I I know. <laughs> Greetings, strangers, queer and pleasant. I'm not Laura Kate Magnet Dale. And I'm not Jane Eyre's Magnet Dale. And welcome to another episode of Queer and Pleasant Strangers. It's a podcast with two queer trans women who are wives at each other talk about the things we've done in the week and do silly voices and skits and try and make each other have a bit of a giggle. Giggle! And it's just a nice little wholesome time. Yeah. It's probably going to be on the on the shorter end of corpses because I'm a sleepy bean. You're a sleepy bean, I'm a sore bean. Yeah, we're, we're, a, we're a pair of beans. Uh, just a couple of beans. Yeah, we're in I, beans. you've you've had you've had a, you've had a bad time. I pulled my back on Friday night. And it's been bad since. It's been horrible since. Uh, I have been running around getting ready to travel, and then I go travel in the morning. You're so off I'm to a... Pride in another yeah. country. I, a, a Pride event in another country was like, hey, would you like to come do Pride with us? I was like, hell yeah. I want to go about 15 degrees north. Yeah, just br bring me a few latitude or longitude points upwards and... Yeah, by the time you hear this, I will either be in or will have been in Norway mm. at Trondheim Pride. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what have you been playing this week, Jane? What, what have I been... Oh, God. Oh, 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 now oh, you're no. asking have me. I, have, oh. I, have I caught you off guard? It's all right. I can see one of them from here. We played Land vs. Sea. We did. This is a little hex-based board game that's pretty simple. Yeah. You pick a team of either land or sea. They both fundamentally play the exact same, yeah. but it, it, they're just opposing side, uh, parts of tiles. And you're trying to complete land masses or bodies of water. And you get points scored for every hex that is part of a, of a body of water yeah. or a land mass that is yours. And also, there are additional scoring criteria, yeah. like, are there little X's on your thing? Or do you have a, a thread of mountains or a thread of coral? Yeah. Uh, we played the basic one where it was just like trying to enclose water masses or land masses to score points on them. And what you're basically trying to do is balance um, extending your land or water mass to make it worth more points, but also not expanding it so much and in such a way that it's really difficult to close off. Because like, let's say I'm trying to make uh, the biggest water mass possible. I have to end up with every single edge of it surrounded by land. Mm -hmm. And... It's very hard to find pieces that have exactly the right combinations of land on these sides and uh, water on these sides to fit into the gap you need to close off that thing and not yes. make it get bigger. And mm -hmm. That yeah. is the trick. All of the pieces are double-sided, but um, your opponent will only ever see the top side of, of yes. the ones in front and of you. And when you're select either selecting off of the stack new tiles or stealing tiles from another player, you only see the top half of the tile. Until you until have taken you, it. Yes, once it's in your possession, you can look at the other side and, oh, ooh, you've got new options. Mm. 
for a game that is like it's a small box it's yep. a simple setup it's relatively cheap yep the base uh the base rules are a simple explainer nice setup and tear down yeah it is like it is a nice simple small box game that i can definitely see yeah. us playing more of oh, absolutely and as to people who don't always do well super well with spatial awareness puzzles yeah both managed to gel pretty well with this. Yeah. Don't know how well we'll do going forward with the the waypoints and the um the mountains and the caravans yeah. and the coral and all the other stuff. I mean, at least in part, uh, it involved some like, do you mind if I put this tile down and check that it fits the way I think it does for a sec? Mm -hmm. Um, and sure, that might mean me turning it over to its secret side and just don't pay too much attention until I've decided I'm putting it there, um, a little bit. But that's. That's just how we have to play spatial orientation games. Yay! But it's it's, it's two player. You can play three or four player. The, the player rules, you play in teams. Uh, the the way the rules were explained for three and four player made it sound like they they sound like afterthoughts. They don't sound like they're what the game is balanced for. Hard to say. I would, I mean, three three player. I definitely don't think seems like the the most coherent idea yeah four player and then is four just... player makes sense it's just two teams of two yeah exactly it's just two teams working together like two people working on the water or two people working on the land that but it does funny. mean that you've got more tile pool to steal from potentially yes it does because you can steal even from your own teammate and also you'll have two people on the other opposite side yes so lots of stealing options there if you're like i just need this thing indeed mm-hmm uh, what, what about you? What have you played? Oh, we've been playing a thing together. Um, mm. We have played through most of the way through The Legend of Zelda The Link Between Worlds. That's uh, the 3D one. Yeah, the 3DS that one. we've not been playing in 3D. Uh, the one where you can play all of the uh, the dungeons in whatever order, depending on what order you rent all of the items you need. Mm -hmm. You can eventually purchase them to permanently have. Um, and yeah, we've been playing it. On the TV with a controller, because yes. that makes it easier to play together than playing on original so hardware. So much easier. Like, craning next to look at one small screen. Uh -huh. um, we found a solution for uh, doing the touch screen whenever it was occasionally required. Yep. Which... While also still using a controller. Yeah, it, it worked out pretty well. That game, that game's art style scales up pretty nicely. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. I really like that game, despite its relatively short length in the realm of Zelda games. But that fits in with a thing we talk about a lot, about just enjoying a shorter game these yeah. days, and just, this is what I have time for. Yay! I mean, look, like, I'm putting it lengthwise up against like most of the Zelda games we've been playing, which have been like console ones which are designed mm -hmm. for sit for big lengthy player sessions, and yeah. I feel like the handheld ones are designed to be play this in little short bursts um, mm. a bit more than we've been doing. But, like, I like the you can get the items in any order right from the start and sort of go explore as you will mm -hmm. system. Yeah. I think that works really well. I think that it's balanced to give you plenty, but not an overwhelming number of rupees so that you can engage with that shopping mechanic without yeah. too much stress. Yeah, especially after you've completed all the the, the first three amulet bits and yes. you can get on with actually saving up to buy things rather than just renting them. Yes, like it, it, it's pretty well balanced in that regard. I think some of the dungeons have are really nicely designed. Yeah. Um, Very few moments of like annoyed frustration. Mm. Uh, the wall emerging mechanic is great and it's a real shame that we're probably never going to get that again yeah. or rarely going to get also that again. Also the, the art for all the wall merges and yeah. the people have been turned into paintings. The, that, that style is really beautiful. Yeah, the, the wall merges integrate so well with the existing Zelda formula. Yes. They don't feel like a bolted on addition. They feel very in keeping. It, it, it's not like some of the Zelda gimmicks over the years that feel a little... Now I'm doing something completely different to what I would normally be doing. Yeah. Like, I would argue this feels more baked into the the, the formula than, say, Wolf Link did. Wolf Link was yeah. fun, but Wolf Link felt like, here, n now you're doing a completely separate thing for a while, and... Yeah, I guess, kind of. And it, 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 it does sort of make it a game of two halves a little yeah. bit. Yeah. This is one of the better integrated gimmicks, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I th definitely think so. Yeah. I mean, you're not using a huge amount... 
most of the time, but then sometimes there's boss fights that absolutely rely on it, like that oh, big fist. That big fist was so fun. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it because it, it took you a while to to get through that it, one. It did, but it was a it was a good fair fight. I just needed yeah. to I needed to get it down, mm. and you did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We didn't even have fairies at that point. No, we didn't, because and... we forgot to pick up the net. Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I we've got I think like one dungeon and then like the final dungeon yeah. left to do and yeah, it was, it's been a, a a couple of lengthy days of play and mm-hmm. we got most of the way through it and it's nice to be able to sort of just in a weekend play through a game and feel mm-hmm. like you've had a a good complete experience. It's also quite nice to have the um specifically with that map to just go there was a thing here in Link to the Past, is there yeah. a thing here in Link Between Worlds? Indeed. There's a really nice amount of, like, respect for the game it's based on without feeling like a complete retread. Yes. And recontextualizing stuff and doing new things with existing familiar spaces. Like, I wouldn't be opposed to more Zelda games that are set in worlds we've been in in the past. Yeah, absolutely. Um, That just jiggle things around. <sighs> I mean, that's why we have randomizers, right? That's why randomizers are yeah. so popular. Well, like, you know, if if they were to announce, like, you know, at some point in the future, like a Wind Waker, like, oh yeah, we're reusing the Wind Waker art style and world map, but there's a bunch of new things and a bunch of new dungeons and some new mechanic gimmicks. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I say that, that's probably I mean, we... what we're about to get with Breath of the Wild too. is... Here is the same world and link. Yeah, I mean, Phantom Hourglass Spirit Tracks yeah. obviously took the art style and some of the characters. Yeah. So it was nice to sort of go, sort of revisit those things. Why not do more of that? Yeah. Give us another Wind Waker. Give us yeah. Wind Waker 2 for a laugh. Go on. <laughs> go on. Go on. Uh, what about you? What have you been playing this week? <laughs> I've been playing with many, many bees. I have clicked on so you, many bees. Yes, yes, this is I Commissioned Some Bees. It's a series of games called I Commissioned Some Bees. A thing that every time you put it in, like, you you mention it in something like the Quips um, topic list chat, I'm like, oh, t- show me the bees you commissioned. <laughs> I have to hold myself back from asking to see the bees you've commissioned. I want to see the commissioned bees. Um, So, the concept of this game, very simple. Game designer went on the commission he plays, yeah. commissioned some artists to draw some slightly abstract yeah. art. Um, there's a lot of that sort of, um, what do you call it, like freeform art yeah. stuff. There's flow arts, mm. um, like James teaches. Um, we know people who teach that art yeah. style um, or do do it as a, like a meditative or relaxing type thing. Yeah. Um, so there is an awful lot of that style. There's also some like um, sort of like that, but more cartoony type mm. stuff. Uh, basically, it is a Where's Wally for bees. So you click on bees, and once you've clicked on all the bees, you get a different piece of artwork. <gasps> Each of the five currently available games has ten pieces of art in it. The first one has a bonus piece of art in it. Yeah. So you can just click on hundreds of bees and the quality of these is variable <laughs> so almost all of the art is absolutely gorgeous yeah um there's, there's a couple where it's just like i recognize this artist uh, this art style i reckon that's the same one from like the first one or the second yeah. one um so do be clear have these artists been commissioned to go do some art but make sure there's some bees in it I don't know. Because like, the, the, the way I'm interpreting this is, do whatever you want art-wise, but just make sure there's some bees hidden in it. Um, I don't know, because if it is, then they're obviously having to put those bees on a separate layer. Yeah. And then the, uh, dis- the, the video game aspect is having to go through and put those bees into removable aspects, because every time you click a bee, it goes poof and disappears. Okay. Um, and I mean, I suppose you could do hide a bunch of bees in it, but make all the bees a separate layer. Give me a, a bee-less layer as well. You can also do one more bee mode. <gasps> one more bee? Yeah. So you just click on the, the plus one bee uh, from the menu. It's like, oh, I've done this one. Do you just want to do like just a couple of bees? I've done this artwork. I want to look at this artwork again. But what if there was five bees? Find the five bees rather than oh, find 300 bees. Oh, you just put some bees. more bees in. Just... 
Just, well, I mean, there won't be any in there. I imagine they're probably some of the same bees that you've already yeah, seen. But just... But find five rather than 308, for example. Yeah. Um, some of them have things like honey dippers or like uh, beekeeping costumes mm. or pots of honey to find yeah. as like bonus items. But very usually it's just about the bees. And, and as I was saying about the, the variable quality... The art, mostly of the art, is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. The thing that sometimes irritates me is the way the bees have been implemented. Right. See, I don't know if there was, like, a style guide and they went, Hey, I'm commissioning you to do some bees, put some bees, and they have to look like this, or this, or this in your artwork. Yeah. Because sometimes the bees are... Just a little capsule with wings and two lines on them. Okay. And that, that, that is all the bee you get. They're not coloured, so that they're, yeah. they're transparent, so they fit nicely into various different backgrounds. Sometimes they will be using a colour from the background, and they'll be like near to a thing, but like on the edge of it. Yeah. So that's that that is the the bee bleed. Um, okay. So can you spot it that way? Like there is one in the first game that is just devious because up to then all the bees have been like black outlines yeah sometimes they've been like they've had the yellow bit on them or, or yeah. black and yellow but that's been it and there is this one level that is it looks like a little town mm. beautiful piece of art once again and the bees in that are suddenly like oh this gray and this shadow from the building we're going to use the lighter grey to make a bee in the darker grey, just on the edge in a really tiny size. Oh. And that one, I think, is the hardest one in the first of these games. Yeah. Um, There are others where the background is very, very abstract, so the bees are a bit different. Yeah. It'll be three yellow dots in, in a row with yeah. two white dots on either side. Mm. And they're like in quite thick bulb black outlines and they fit really nicely with the background and you yeah. see that type of bee in a couple of the more abstract ones or yeah. the, the more really dense stuff mm. again really like those then there's some where the the line weight for the art and the line weight for the bees are completely different which means okay. you can sit in fully zoomed out mode and click on 200 bees and go oh i finished it without having to zoom in once yeah. Because they were all a different line weight and all completely popped out of the background really, really easily. Yeah. And then you've got others which are just they they have gone with the transparent B style of just an outline, but then they're put so densely on a background that like I'm just gonna cl click anything that looks like an overworked line <laughs> yeah. because that's probably a B. Whether I can tell from the yeah. background or not is an entirely different matter. And those ones irritate me. Yes. It's weird. I got to, I think, four and I was like, oh, I'm really enjoying this one. The art in this has been, like, so nice. Probably yeah. the best of all of them. And then I just got to one of them that was just the... There was a lot, an awful lot of bees on it and a lot of the bees were just... Well, maybe click on anything oval and hope for the best. Oh, no. It's like, I couldn't... I'm not identifying bees, I'm just identifying an overworked line or an oval. And yeah. hoping for the best. And usually I'm right, weirdly. Um, it like the old point-and-click adventure game thing of, oh, that's that's got a different art style because you pasted it on top of the background. I can see that's a clickable. Even, not even that. Like, sometimes it really does just look like an overworked line. Yeah. You're just like, come on. Oh. Or some of them, like, they're so small that you, even when you're zoomed in, they're horribly pixelated. It's yeah. Like, that's, that's less than ideal. Why do this? But also, you can get all six games for, a, uh, all five games for about six quid. Nice. And I've had a good few hours clicking on bees this week that sounds pretty chill the the soundtrack for it has like so, so when you open up the new game it's like are you streaming this game yeah. if so turn off the music because it's all licensed right and you will get content id probably yeah um but then you've also got like um random background sounds so you might have uh there's one that seems to be set in like a playground yeah and you can hear like children playing indistinctly yeah. in the background maybe some wind and it's it's almost like something out off of my noise. Yeah. That sort of constant background drone mm. a little bit, not too loud. There are individual volume sliders. If you're like, I, I'm getting annoyed with that. I just want to play in silence. Yes. I just want the sound of occasionally poofing bees. 
Because when you click on them, they just go... <laughs> um, some of the artwork is just stunning. Like, really beautiful stuff. It's like, I I should commission this artist. Yeah. <laughs> because they do beautiful work. Um, yes, thank you, Johnny, Johnny Chiodini, for a, a very nice chill stream last week. I think it was last week. I was like, I will get this game that you have played. Oh, they they do a, f a pack of all the current ones available. I'll just get that. So now I have so many bees. Bees. And there are new, I think there's a new one coming out in September, Ooh. which we are now in. So yeah, possibly new bees as I'm about new to run out to bees. New bees. New bees. <laughs> Bloody new bees. You are not a newbie at hunting new bees. No. So that's, uh, I commissioned some bees. What have you played? Uh, I've started playing, and I, I, I'll talk a little bit about it. I've started playing Immortality, which is the new game by Sam, Sam Barlow, who did, um, most notably, Her Story. Mm -hmm. um, Her Story, absolutely fantastic game. If you've never played it, it is a game about um, searching cl for clips in a police database to try and uncover what happened with a murder that took place. Um, or someone who's a murder suspect, I believe. Uh, the thing that made her story work really well is, like, there was a clear context for why you were sort of hopping around clips out of order, um, because you were dealing with an old police database searching by keywords that had been said during little clips from interviews. Yes. Um, and it made sense as a reason why you were sort of jumping around a little bit um, as to why these clips were all sort of segmented the way they were, mm -hmm. um, the reason why there was this database of individual parts of a larger whole because they were all different conversations that happened at different times over different days. It was a really good idea and it's sort of non-linear storytelling format as a way of solving a mystery was very clearly thought out. Um, Sam Barlow has made other games since that have continued variations on this um, theme of non-linear exploration of a story through clips. And some of them may be better than others, and so far Immortality has been, I think, by quite quite a wide margin his weakest work, mm. in that it doesn't feel like there is a clear context for why you were exploring a bunch of clips that are out of order that haven't been sorted. Yes. Um, it feels like uh, there is no clear mystery going in, but you're told there's a mystery to solve, and therefore... It really colours the experience right from the start. It's not like, I'm solve trying to solve what happened with a murder case, something where it makes mm. sense. It's his... his Yeah. So the, the, the concept this time is there's three films from this um, actress. Uh, all three of these films were made in the um, 70s and 80s. For varying reasons, none of them ever released. And go, go through a bunch of out-of-order clips from these three films and some interviews surrounding them. And solve the solve a mystery. What is the mystery? Who knows? But here's a bunch of out of order clips that, like, it it makes no sense why you wouldn't just watch these films in order. Why they're spliced up clips? Why you're jumping around them? Mm. Um, the idea that like going in, you're assuming there's a mystery makes no sense. It's like, oh yeah, we just dug up an archive of some lost films from several decades ago. Yeah, like right. The other thing that really doesn't work about this for me is that her story really works because it's all about explicitly stated keywords. You watch through someone talking in a police interview and you can have like a physical paper notebook next to you. And if a word is said and you go, oh, that probably comes up in other interviews, write it down on a bit of paper. Keep watching the clip. Don't you don't have to like pause it or jump around at any point mm. when you're done watching that clip. You can go, cool, I'm back at the search engine. I'll type in that word I think probably comes up a fair amount. Um, and I don't I don't think it's every clip, but it, it, like at least the first ten clips or whatever it is that it finds that have that word in will show up. And it's like, great, cool. I can at my leisure start watching these and going, pulling at these threads. And if any more words come up, I can start writing those down and pull those threads later. Immortality works by getting you to click on things you see in the clips, like visual elements in right. the frame, and it won't take you to, like, every time a clip matches that. Mm. It will take you to a single predetermined other clip that kind of visually sort of matches that. Okay. So, it'll... Sometimes it it works better than other times. Um, 
So, like, let's say I'm watching a clip and there's a particular actress in a particular outfit, and I go, I'm going to click on her face and see other clips of her in that outfit. No, you're going to see another clip of her. She might have the same emotion, she might have a different one, she might be in the same outfit or not, it might be from the same film or not, oh it'll be a picture of her face in another clip. Which, like, is such a less um, intuitive way to, like, comprehensively explore and to piece your way through this narrative. Yeah. Um, sometimes clicking on an item will take you to something that really doesn't feel connected. Like, ah, I clicked on a vase with some flowers in it, and I got taken to a clip of uh, that had a, a, a cup of water in it. I guess that's a receptacle with liquid in it, also. Doesn't look the same. There's no context for, like, in-universe in how clicking on these things is getting me to other clips. Like, her story had police database search words in the transcript. Like, yeah. that that made sense. Perhaps even more annoying is... The way I've ended up playing this to progress through it is, let's say I pick one clip. It's the earliest clip I've found so far of her first movie, for example. Oh. I'll go through, and any time I see something that might be a clickable item, I'll click on it. And if I do, it'll take me to that one other, that one other clip, and I'll go, cool, that's added another clip to my library. I'm not even going to touch that new clip. Just go back to the clip I was watching and keep clicking on things. Um, and by the time I finished watching one clip, clicking on everything that looks like it's probably a clickable, I've probably collected like 15 other clips. And like, I'm. I feel like I am finding material infinitely faster than I can watch it if I want to be thorough properly. And that means that, like, I feel like I'm going to get, like, a third of the way through this and be like, oh, I already have all the clips, I can just sit and watch it now. Like, it feels... It just feels like such a less well-thought-out execution of this same concept that feels like it is the way it is because it's a Sam Barlow game and this is the way that the, 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 the well-received Sam Barlow game is done. And it really just doesn't click for me. Um, I'm gonna stick with it, I wanna see where the plot's going, because I know Sam Barlow can tell a good story, I just feel like... I feel like this the way I do about the original cut of um, Quantic Dreams Beyond Two Souls. It did not in any way, shape, or form benefit from being told out of order, and if I could just watch it as a movie in order, I would probably enjoy the experience more. That's Immortality. I'm going to try and keep playing it, but it's just not vibing. What about you? Are you playing anything else? Um, I think that's it, really. Yeah. There's not been a play heavy week. Yeah, I mean... I've it... been busy and in pain. Yeah. I mean, the only other thing I've really been playing is Vampire Survivors, and <sighs> I finally started getting some, like, some runs of that game where I can, in theory, last forever. Yeah. Earning basically as much money as I have patience for in order to pump like 500 eggs at a time into a character that I want to use but is not necessarily great I'm now trying to remember if it was before or after last week's quips that I did the the Vampire oh, Survivors run after, it was after okay. quips last week I did a Vampire Survivors run that literally caused me to have to reset my computer because yeah. it made everything slow down yeah <laughs> Like, I did the full run, I killed death, I got to the end. But it had been at, like, three frames a second from minute five. It was so broken. Like, I was getting slowed down from, like, minute two. The sound cut out at minute three because it couldn't keep up. Mm. And then, like, by half an hour later, it had so fundamentally broken my computer that I couldn't even load YouTube. Oh, no. <laughs> uh... Luckily, it survived a reset, so... Yeah. No, I've been I've been experimenting with like deliberately limiting the number of weapon and uh, like max number of weapons a character can have so I can start like getting the the overloaded uh level ups limit on breaks. them. The limit breaks like as soon as I can. Setting up builds with Queen Sigma to be like just give me money, 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 money and make your health uh, basically unkillable. Yeah. Uh, which has been pretty fun. And I I'm I'm digging that game. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. I think that's everything I've played this week. Well then, oh, time for this. 
Um, okay, okay, okay. Emergency meeting, emergency meeting. Right, right, I, right. I don't mean to panic you, but we have a code red on our hands. It's Oh, God. It's happened. It's a problem. We need oh, to deal God. with it. Um, Let's see if one of them turned out to be trans. Uh, uh, I, unfortunately, yes. So, what? Yeah, oh. I know. So, look... We look. We here in the in the uh, in the in the QA department really need to work out how how we here at Netflix have managed to let that show get a second season because it's animated. A second, for, oh, it's come animated on. for one. Animated, it's animated. We don't support animation. Animation's no, no. for losers. Especially not the weird queer ones. Well, that's the thing. It's one of the que- it's one that's queer and animation. It's, oh. it's got a trans in it. Beloved trans it's, character. It's got a trans who's a gay in on it. On this network. And it's an animation, and someone has greenlit it for season two. And we need to get to the bottom of this, because we can't undo it now. It's it's it's, it's happening, can't we? unfortunately. I, I mean, mean, I was looking at HBO the other week. Apparently, they can just cancel things that are already finished. Can't we do that? Well, I mean, in theory, we could, but we have spent money on it, and we'd at least recoup money if it goes that. We're not that much of f- f- fools. Well, we'd indeed, there's no point just throwing the money away. Exactly. I'm Like, I'm bigoted. I'm not that bigoted. I'm bigoted, but I'm not a fool. But, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But is, the problem is we need to work out is, look, it's already, money's already gone into it we need to work out how it happens we can make sure it doesn't happen again so that we don't get in another situation of well money's been spent on it i guess we've got to let it happen now but yeah look i i I, look i've gone from the top to the bottom and i can't work out where it's gone i i tried asking the uh you know the 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 the, uh, the PR department, and they're like, nope, we hate the trans as animation just as much as everyone else. Uh, 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 I tried asking the CEO, and they're like, no, we hate the trans as an animation. Uh, 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 try, tried asking the community manager, who seemed to foolishly think that the show was popular and successful and, and probably should get greenlit. Uh, uh, well, I, mean, I mean, they've got no powers, so they wouldn't have No, no just because they've seen a few spreadsheets, and you know, how even did they get those on the yeah, indeed, indeed. Oh, sorry, I'm getting a message. I, right, I, I've just right, received an right, email right, from, um, right. from... Okay, I, okay. Right. So, mm, I see where the problem is. Right. The people in the statistics department... Statistics. They're, they're oh, looking, bloody spreadsheets again. Uh, they're they're looking at numbers, down. and they saw numbers go up, and they were like, oh, I've been told number go up. We should do we need more of this. Oh, I love number go up. Exactly. That means more money. They forgot to, like, you know, to colour in the square that says this one's an animation and it's trans, so forget. Oh. Ignore the fact that number go up. This is a bad number go oh, up. Oh, heads this must is, roll for this. Heads must roll for this. Heads Num- must roll. Number go up should always be colour-coded as animation and trans. Don't let number go up. Exactly. Well, for uh. How did it happen? Absolute, How did it happen? Absolute bloody Nothing travesty. happens for a second series round here. We cancel it all. Cancel, let, al- cancel. let alone the trances and the animation. Right, well, it definitely doesn't get renewed for a third series. Oh, no. What? I think oh, 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 God, the stats department's going working overtime. God right, that's it. I'm, I'm going... I'm marching down there just as soon as I, I finish this gin. Uh, that's a wonderful idea if right. we can still stand. Well, we'll see. Gin, gin. So it would have been the winter of 1994, 95, I think, maybe? Uh No, it was definitely 95 because uh, my daughter had just uh was just graduating high school right and uh, well mm. now now she had been at a, a little school in uh morden uh-huh. and it was it was it was no i mean i know they said the statistics weren't very good there but actually mm. i i think you'll find it was actually rather good and she uh-huh. did very well she was she got very high g- grades and in fact one of the uh-huh. best in the in the school overall uh, okay go on go on Go on. And uh, well, it was a, it was it was a beautiful summer, and and she was just so happy to be uh, to be yeah, out of there. Yeah. And then, yeah. and uh, yeah. then she went away for a year. Uh huh. Went away to to visit her aunt in India for a year. Yeah. And yeah. they had they they had just the most wonderful time. Um, and she really um, had just I'm a very sure good they did. experience. I'm sure they and, did. Um... Well, that that's how when she came back, she was telling me all about oh. this recipe that she'd yeah. been trying. Oh, okay, we're getting to the recipe now, are we? Okay, and, okay. Well, yes. Well, it was very important to her because she had been taught it by uh, someone who'd moved there from Surbiton. And oh, it was so just, was, such okay. a small world that, you know, she'd oh, gone all the really way into the story, all the way okay. across the world and she'd met someone from just down the oh, road, really. Oh, how, how, and uh, they how said they were having this dish every other night, really. Uh-huh. It really, it really was very yeah, but special. But we're going to get to the point any moment now, yep. <laughs> exactly, it was very special. And uh, I just, I mean... Uh-huh. 
I mean, I don't think I've ever known like cauliflower used in quite that way. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> we nearly done. And I think it was just, it's just really lovely. And obviously all the fragrant herbs and spices in yep, there. Yep, yep. And the when, herbs whenever, and spices, when, yep. whenever I make yep. it, it really does take me back to... The, to that time, oh, it, was, it, was, it was a, it was a similar again. time, and it was it was so. What's loved. in the bloody recipe? God, it was just every time I make it, it's just so special, and it really I, it, it makes me think. Just I just want back. to know what the fucking recipe is. What's in the recipe? Ah, 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 Potatoes and spices. Which spices? <laughs> Onions. <laughs> <laughs>Still enjoying that. Season two really did take a good step up from season one. Yeah, I d- I, um, I didn't find it as just maximum offensive as the first it, season. It definitely like reined itself in and calmed itself down a little. Yes. But like, and I appreciate that. Yeah, there were some genuinely really tense episodes in yeah, there in places. Yeah. Like the finale of season two was really solid. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, like there were some really good heartfelt character moments. Yeah. Uh, I very much enjoyed some of the species they played around with that. Yes. Bless you. Uh, that don't get so much uh, airtime in the live action. Got stuff. dolphins. Yeah. Um. Some of the like season long running plot that like came together toward the end was really good. Yeah. I was engaged with the cliffhanger for season yeah. three. It's, yeah. It's it's pretty good. I'm enjoying it so far. It's good. Yeah. It's very good. Yeah, lower lower decks is is it's on an upward trajectory. Yes, I'm I'm glad that someone pestered us to keep watching it because I'm yeah. definitely enjoying the second series way more. Yeah. What about you? What have you watched? Ah, uh, we watched the new episode of She Hulk. We did. That it's... continues to be a very fun show. We did. I I enjoyed the the plot point there. Yeah. We got some fun with Megan the Stallion, we, Stallion, which has absolutely pissed off. <sighs> Weird. Nerd gatekeepy pricks. I, I very much enjoyed the bit where they used a bunch of real it, shitty internet boy comments about She Hulk the show as comments about She Hulk the character. That's that is. I mean, that's very She Hulk. Yeah. Um. I'm glad we're finally getting some lawyering. <laughs> I I I, yeah. I I want bizarre lawyer shenanigans. Yes, that twist was great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hang on, I can win this case. Yeah, it's oh, it, it's 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 such a fun show. Yeah, I I'm more enjoying of it. this MCU, more yes. of this. But also, don't give money to Disney. Yeah, don't give money to Disney. <laughs> but Disney do, you know, keep letting the MCU, the projects exist for us to not pay you for. Evil play. Yeah. Uh, we. Well, we also watched uh, we watched films as you alluded to. We did. We watched uh, Prey. We watched Prey, the Predator movie. The opposite of Predator. The the seventeen hundreds Native American Predator movie, which definitely doesn't have that pistol in it. Definitely wink. not. Definitely not. Wink. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed that. Um, <laughs> I thought they did a really good job of this of bringing it back to just here is. Here is a very tense interaction between two people who know that they the other is trying to hunt them. Yeah. Having a tense a tense interaction. It stripped away a lot of the the gimmickry and was yeah. one of the better predator films. Yeah, definitely. I I liked it a lot more than most of the recent predator. Like, I I haven't seen what did you say Pre- predators was the uh the the yeah, predator. Oh, the predator. Is it the Sorry. predator? I've the, seen predators. The, I haven't seen the yeah. predator. Yes. <laughs> the one of the you haven't seen the one about the autistic kid. No. No. <laughs> and you've only watched that cuz you were you needed to have I, opinions. People needed opinions about it. We the internet demand an opinion from yeah. Wink. But yeah, I I thought that like it was beautifully shot. Yeah. Um, very well paced and tensioned. Yeah. I I liked that we both sort of got the hint about what was happening, even though obviously you're not told anything specifically about the predator, rather than how yes. people are observing it. Because we, we were both like, we 
we both fleshed out our own backstory of I think this is a young predator. Yeah, we we both came to the same conclusion independently about what this predator was and why they were here and why they were the way they are. And we both came to the same conclusion despite there not really being anything textual. Yes. To and tell you? <laughs> to autistic people who don't usually pick up on subtext. But I mean, I, I think they did a really good job because like it was very clearly... They set up parallels in a way that I think like wasn't spoon-fed but was really easy to catch. Yeah. Um, I really liked that they largely stuck to a practical predator suit and were very smart about when they used CGI. Yes. In ways that were very... Very carefully thought through to minimise the Uncanny Valley. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think they did a really good job. Yeah. It was an interesting costume overall, because obviously all the Predators are ever so slightly different. Yeah. Um, the pr a protagonist had, like, really well well thought through motivations. Yep, yeah. and, and as you said, they'd managed to get all uh, natives playing native parts, so that yeah. was a um, good thing. From from what I have heard, it has been well received within the communities it's attempting to represent, which is always a positive. Yeah, it's nice to see indigenous peoples being able to represent themselves. Yeah. And you mentioned that there is a a, a dub whereby yes. they it is all done in Native American. Yes, um, it is all of the the actors in the film dubbing their own parts, which is really nice because yeah. obviously, like. You know, anyone who's enjoying that dub is actually still hearing the actors, and that's great. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I think we both had that moment of, are we watching a film that's supposed it, to it, be about Native Americans? It was one of those, like, uh, I'm just going to Google gonna to be like, has has there been a bunch of reasons to be critical of this? Yes. And I saw very little, which yeah. is positive. Um, that is, that's nice. Yeah. More of that, please, Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> it's... It was a really good film. I don't know what I was expecting going in, but I really enjoyed it by the end. Yeah, really enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, then we watched uh, Coco. We did. That's a visually and emotionally beautiful film. Absolutely. It had it on the list oh, for a while. Hadn't yeah. ever got around to it. No. <laughs> um. So for anyone who's never watched it, it is a uh, Pixar animated film about a young boy um, who ends up in the land of the dead. He desperately wants um, to make music, but his family just wants to do shoes and have a complete outlawing yes. on music. Um, and it is a film about family and not wanting to be forgotten and remembering those who've passed on. Mm -hmm. And it is... And the celebration of Dia de, yeah. Dia de Mortis. Yeah, it is I a... I think I pronounced that correctly. Uh, it, is, it, is a, it is a beautiful film visually. It is like... It is stunning in terms of use of colour. Um, very visually dense scenes. Yes. Uh, like the, the scenes for um, the other side across the bridge. Yeah. The, like just the denseness of... All the, the like the buildings and and the way they were laid out kind of reminded me of uh, some of the shots of the TVA from yeah. Loki, like just those huge, very dense packed shots of people live right. here, but slightly chaotic, slightly uneven. Um, yes. Like it, it, it all feels like it's been added to piece by piece over time rather than too uniform. Yes, in a way that gives it a real sense of character. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I would. You know, it's been a few days since we watched it, and thinking back, I think that the end of this film might be one of the most most emotionally impactful scenes in any Pixar film. Like, mm. like it's really up there. Yeah, <laughs> up um, there. Yeah. Like, for a film that is largely a silly action comedy, um, through a lot of its yeah, I mean, most time, of it is conveyed through that. Obviously, they are. Yeah. Trying to hammer home on the the, yeah. the family and the remembering, and it's 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 ending manages to really hit hit, hit home without feeling out of left field or unearned. Yes, like they put the legwork into oh, make that ending be fucking beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I particularly enjoyed a lot of the designs for the Alabadejes. Um, yeah, just stunning stuff um yeah. like i've just enjoyed a lot of uh, depictions of alibi hazing um various uh 
games movies things. Yeah. Um, so it was nice to sort of see some of that in that particular animation style. I like the way they moved a lot of the skulls, uh, yes. the, like the, the, the skeleton acting of what you can do when your characters can come apart and put themselves back together again. Yes. Um, the music was beautiful. Uh, for, you know, for <sighs> considering music is largely forbidden. Yeah. Um, that they managed to get some, some very nice music in there. Yes. Um, and I will say this. It is always I I will always credit a film when there there is a fairly major reveal in this film that like I could see coming quite a long way off. Yes. But when it happened the how and the why and the delivery of the reveal completely overshadowed the fa- like the fact that I knew it was coming. Weirdly, I had a moment quite early on when I was like, oh, I bet that, that is the thing yeah. that is the thing that is the thing that turns out, in but fact, like, to be the thing. Yeah. But by the time we had actually got to that reveal, yeah, it, I was it, like, oh, I'd yeah. forgotten and sort of started yeah. to doubt myself like, about that's, that. That's such, honest. Like, that is such an impressive thing <laughs> when a film can go like, oh yeah, clearly that's, that's going to be that. And then make you, for, like, make you stop thinking about it to the point that you're like, Oh, maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. Oh, no, it is. Okay. It is. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. It's um, beautifully animated. Um, as you mentioned about some of the older characters, the animation yes. for that. I, Just beautifully uh, done. I don't think I've ever seen an elderly female character portrayed in sort of CGI style animation as uh, in such a beautifully detailed way without it, it crossing into the Uncanny Valley. Yes. Like... Absolutely stunning work done there. Yes. That mm, so good. And uh, it was another moment for you to forget that straight people exist. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting <laughs> straight people exist. I don't know if I've talked about this on quips. I keep forgetting straight people exist. That's uh, fair. I played the quarry, and there were two characters who were brother and sister, and I kept referring to them as like as a couple, and having to be reminded that they were siblings because I forgot straight people existed, and now here. There were two, like, Uncle So-and-so and Uncle So-and-so, and both of them are like, there's there's a locket that is opened up and it has the pictures of the two of them, and I'm like, oh yeah, clearly... Clearly a gay cl- couple. Clearly a gay couple, and it's like, oh no, they're identical twins, fuck, I forgot... <laughs> yeah, they're identical, <laughs> fuck, I forgot, get- I forgot the straights exist. <laughs> Look, you tell me there's a pair of uncles and you show me a locket with two uncles in it, I'm gonna assume they're, 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 they're gays. Just... <laughs> coincidentally similar looking guys. <laughs> I love you. I, and I love that you regularly seem to forget that straight people exist. Um, I, I keep thinking about the fucking TikTok sound, the uh, oops, I've accidentally created a false reality. I've, I've surrounded myself with so many gays I forget that the straights exist. Oh, this will be the bubble they keep talking, telling us yeah, and warning us yeah. about. Oh. Us in our little bubbles. Ooh. Yeah, my echo chamber. Surrounding oh. myself with only the gays. Oh. Acting like straight don't exist. <laughs> You're all welcome here, straight listeners, by the way. But um, You're very we will occasionally forget you will... that you exist. Look, no, I won't forget you exist. I'll just assume you're gay. Yeah. And that's fine. Correct me, and I'll, I'll correct I'll myself. And remember yeah, you know. in future. But I will. I, I, I just forget people. I forget that people can be straight. People can be straight, allegedly. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. So, we also watched Light, yeah? We did! A film I enjoyed way more than I anticipated. <laughs> yeah, I'm... I, I mean, I, I don't know where they get off with the... Hmm, the whole, like, oh, it's the first gay relationship. The, I, the 50, I mean, 50th first I mean, gay relationship. I will say this, you did leave the room during the... Uh... Sorry, I blinked and missed it. I mean, you left the room for like two minutes and missed like four scenes in a montage. I yeah. I agree with you, but no, I... don't don't get me wrong. I've already seen them because uh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. The, there was a lot going around on yeah. Twitter of this is it is it this is the gay representation we get. I mean, I, look, it's very rushed, but I thought it was sweet and I, oh, I, I absolutely was... think it's sweet, but I don't think once again that they can get away with going. Ah, oh, we're doing queer representation. Yeah, it it is what it is. I think that it is better than some in the past, but yes. it's definitely uh, you know I'll say this: it's better than your your lesbian being a cop in yes. um what was it out uh the the D and D world one I forget what that's called. Same. Yeah, that one. 
At least it's not a cop this time. Nothing worse than a cop. Uh, but um, yeah, yeah, I really enjoy that story. The, I, the I, plot was nothing like I imagined no. it would be. But like, it was... That, like they they gave some genuinely kind of interesting character development to Buzz. The art style was fun. I enjoyed the supporting cast. They were a lot Especially of fun. Especially socks. Uh, socks. Socks. Socks is, is the amazing. MVP. Socks is wonderful. Um, Taika Waititi, whose character name I forget. Taika Waititi was was great. Was was busy being Taika um, Waititi. Um, angry angry prison grandma was fucking great. Angry prison grandma who can make a bomb out of any three things. Any three things. <laughs> Yeah, just three things. I'll be fine. <laughs> Any three things. Uh, yeah, I I thought it was pretty well paced. Like, it, yeah. it moved along at a good clip. Yep. For a film that had, like, as many plot points as it did, it never felt over complicated. Yep. And I liked what was going on with the villain. Yep. I thought, um... I can't remember what her name was. Um, Hawthorne. Granddaughter Hawthorne. Yes, uh, Granddaughter Hawthorne. I thought she was a really interesting character. Mm. The whole, I want to be the thing. I want to be just like my grandma, but also I'm terrified of space. Yes. But, yes. Uh, and we've had no training, but I'm really keen. Yeah. I, I'll say this. Having recently been re-watching a playthrough of Mass Effect 2, mm -hmm. I... It's weird to watch a film like Lightyear and go, ah, yes, the parallels to emotional beats in Mass Effect 2. <laughs> That's not a comparison I expected to be making. Not very often. No. But yeah, it is a surprisingly decent film for a yeah. film that felt like it had no need to exist. Yeah. It's it killed an hour and a half or, or however yeah. long it was. Yeah. Uh, While I lay on the floor and moaned, it was, no. it was fine. <laughs> Uh, the other thing we watched was we watched the first two episodes of Rings of Power. Yeah. Um, again, don't give Amazon any money. Um, but yeah, the the Lord <laughs> of the Rings prequel. Yeah. What do you think? It's all right. Yeah. I'm not like way. It's it's. Mm, I, right. I I feel like some of the active hatred of it, like, it feels like it's misogynist or racist in origin. Uh, oh, definitely like, racist. Like, I don't I... understand, like, having now watched it, I'm like, I don't understand the hatred. Yeah, I have, but I think because we've been going out again recently, and I've been occasionally doing the, oh, I met someone out, and I've added them to Facebook. <laughs> I've already had to delete one. Yeah. Because we've had that, is it racist? <laughs> oh, 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 God. Here it goes. Is it racist that they've got a black man doing a bad Irish accent in, in Rings of Power? Oh, oh my, goodbye. Oh, no. You seemed like a reasonable human being, but apparently you're a fuckhead. Oh, so... Yeah, I mean, it's fine. So, I is is where I sort of land on it. I think that like the the combat scenes have, that have been there have been really fun. Yeah. I think that the like narrative beats um although a bit spread out and and not like there's not they've not really gotten like terribly into the hooks of of some of the plot lines yet. I think what's there has been really enjoyable. Yeah. I think that the biggest failure so far and like the weakest part of the setup is how much the beginning of episode one is a tell, don't show, super quick summary of age one. Yes. It's we've got we wanna tell you a bit about the Silmarillion, but no much. I, I feel like at the very least what they should have done is started in media res and then cut to a probably a bit more truncated summary of the Cimmerillion events, like starting with about 10 minutes of we're going to incredibly quickly try and tell you about the Cimmerillion yes. is like, it feels like there are more elegant ways they could have. Yeah. Cause they, they kind of half asked the story of the trees. Yeah. And then it was like, and then sun happened it's, somehow. Yeah. We're not really going to explain it, that. They either needed to like s make it less of a big deal and like sh shorten it down, or they needed to commit and make a whole episode that was the and, setup. And also, what 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 is happening at the end of episode two? Like, uh, obviously, no spoilers, but like, are they saying what they think? I think they might be saying because I'm uh, not sure that works in canon. We'll see. <laughs> um, but like. The characterization's been really fun. Yeah. Um. There, there has been like there, there's a whole thing in episode two, like very mild spoilers between the elves and the dwarves. That I think like the character back and forth between the two primary characters going on there is really engaging. Yes. Like 
as soon as you get like a couple of characters with clear motivations having interactions, there's some really neat storytelling happening. Mm. Um, the 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 little girl half foot character. Yes. Um, I really I really like her. She's charming. I, she's yeah. very charming. She's been she's very fun, fun, adventurous. Yeah, Getting she's some Belladonna took vibes there. Yeah, there there have been some like some things very much to like, even if there are some middling padding for space things in between the the better moments. Yeah, I think I am definitely going into this a lot more forgiving than I did the second two. Lord of the Rings movies because mm. I loved the first one. I really loved the extended version of the first one, and I hated the second two movies. Mm. Like I watched them, and I just went, and I don't think I've watched either of them since. I don't think we've ever watched any of the Lord of the Rings stuff together. I I was sort of very into mm. the first one when it came out. Do, do you feel like you would maybe you know prefer uh, prefer the second the other two Lord of the Rings going in knowing what to expect? Maybe. Yeah. So I know I watched all of them at the cinema. Then I got the DVD extended edition of the first one. Really enjoyed that. Ha- then went to watch the second one at the movies and went, I don't like this at all. Got the extended version and went, this did not fix anything. Uh, watched the third one in the cinema, got the extended edition, went, this definitely didn't fix anything. <laughs> I remain unhappy. But I think that's because... Like, the 1981 BBC radio version of Lord of the Rings was such a huge part of my childhood. Yes, it's it's an adaptation that isn't the one that's seared into your brain. Um, it changes a lot of things. And yeah. then The Hobbit came along and made everything so much worse. <laughs> and, like, here's the thing. I think, like, there are certainly worse bits of uh, live-action Lord of the Rings material than Rings of Power. Like, I, yeah. I feel like... For any flaws this has, I'm enjoying it more than I did the, um, like, the, the Hobbit sequels. Uh, like, but, well, yeah. Like, I, at worst, this has been, it's had middling moments. It's been middling to pretty good. I think it helps that I have never managed to get all the way through Silmarillion. So th- there I have least... started several yeah. times. I've tried audio versions, but um, Martin Shaw reading the Silmarillion is so hypnotic yeah it's like and there was just list of name list of name list of name list of uh, what not not Baron ADHD. Luthien. oh shit i need to spin back about 700 yeah. hours not not adhd friendly it's not adhd friendly and it it's like honestly the the first few chapters of silmarillion are very much like reading genesis yes because it uh, is Abraham list of begat, so list, so list of names, so so. list of names of people, many of whom who are, have different names, and also they have their job description in their name, and then like a lot of this and that and the other, and and repeating things and going back and just like this is this is not my brain hurts. <laughs> it is sad, but I want to know the history. Ah, like a lot of what I have picked up about Silmarillion beyond like the first third of the book has been like from breakdowns on like YouTube YouTubers who do like deep dives on just a little bit of history it's like cool you can pick one character out of Silmarillion and go I'm gonna tell you all of the history and then where that ties into the later stuff yeah it's like I can handle that level of legendarium I cannot handle, like, reading it all in one go. And I don't think it was ever meant to be. Yeah. This is Christopher Tolkien going, shit, I need to make a quick mark. I'm going to put together all of Daddy's notes <laughs> and hope for the best. Um, So I think because I have less firm knowledge about it, I am way more forgiving about this. And the fact that a lot of this is just made up. Yeah. I mean, it's all made up, but it's it's made up like, hey, we're going to sort, sort of do the thing, but it's stuff that isn't written... Hard into canon, so we're we're just gonna just gonna take some, some liberties with this. Yeah, Galadriel doing a lot of swimming. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's everything I've watched this week. Ah, oh, I think that's everything I've watched. Well then, time for this. Oh no, we got a new sponsor. Who's our new sponsor? Well, do you struggle to tasks? I, I mean, 
there's a lot of tasks and it's sometimes kind of hard to go where do I start? There's so many tasks. There's many tasks. Sometimes it's like, oh, there's too many tasks. Task, I can't pick ta- one. Task initiation is difficult. Right. I go, uh, I don't know. You pick. Uh. Well, what our new sponsor is offering is household task booster packs. <gasps> okay. Need something to give you a task to get over choice paralysis? Yeah, just tell me what to do. That would help. Open up this booster pack and you'll <laughs> receive cards. Featuring a handful of common tasks. Ooh, ooh okay. Uh, Shuffle. Oh, oh, can I can I look what I got in the booster first? Quick, okay. Quick, can we have a look? Uh, I got washing up. Is it a shiny? Um, uh, that's not a shiny. I think the shiny's usually at the back oh, of the okay. stack. So I got uh, washing up. Yep. Uh, hoovering. Mm-hmm. Um, change the bedding. Yep. Um, uh, take out take out the uh, the, the the food waste. Yeah. Uh, and what did I what did I get as the shiny? Uh, I got. A shiny take out the cat litter. Oh, and a tutu petting the cat Ooh, token yeah. at the back as well. Okay, so what? I shuffle these? You shuffle these. Okay, okay. Except probably not the token. Okay, uh, I mo- remove the token, shuffle the rest. And maybe yeah. sleeve the foil? Okay, okay. I sleeve the foil. Okay, well, I'm going to sleeve them all at that at this point. Because yeah, like, yeah, then I'd know yeah, which the foil was. Yeah. Okay. Shuffle. All right, yep. Draw one. Okay. Go. Cool. Uh, I activate washing up in attack position. Cool. I you, guess I'll go do that. You've triggered my baked on cookies trap. Oh no. <laughs> it's super effective. <laughs> it's fine. You've given it. I have a task to do now though. And that has gotten past the choice paralysis. <laughs> <laughs> That's household task booster packs dot lol dot net. Enter the code QNPS227 and you too can get all these things. Me the, too. the boosters. Me too. You too. <gasps> you Me. too. Me get also. Things. You as well. Also, they've sent us this box of 36 packs. Uh, so we could, like, draft some tasks. Oh, oh, draft. Booster box drafting stream. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Inside the boardroom of Supremacy Software. Hi. Hi. So, uh, we got fucking regulators on our back. Again? Again. They want to stop us doing things and impose rules on us. Ugh. So, here's the problem this I'm time. not giving them any more money. No, right. Like, we gotta, we gotta talk our way out of this. I don't yeah. want to keep paying for stuff. So, you know how we've been buying up, like, basically every studio? Yeah. Like, everyone we can get our hands on. Like, we want to own everyone's childhood. We want to own every franchise that anyone's ever had an emotional Nostalgia is to. important. Franchising is important. Exactly. If it's a franchise, if we can sell it annually, we want to own it. Yeah. So, we are important. Yeah, right? So, you know that uh, that, that shooter franchise, uh, the company that makes the shooters that we recently bought? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, apparently... Oh, that's one of the biggest games in the world, and blah blah blah. It's anti-competitive for one company to own so many things. Hey, blah, any blah, blah, kid blah. Uh, uh, with access to the Unity Asset Store can make a shooter. Exactly. We just want the one with the name on it. Yeah. Exactly. All we're buying is a name. Yeah, but apparently, oh, it's monopolistic to you know own everything. So we need to come up with some like some excuses to try and get them off our back. Um, you know. Uh, here, here's one to start with. Um, well, I mean, we'll still let everyone play the game. It's not like the game's, like, any, no one, the game will be taken away from anyone. Just because we own it doesn't mean that, you know, any fewer people can play it. How's that a monopoly? Everyone can still get it. Yeah, I mean, it's still available to yeah, everyone. Uh, well, we're not even restricting make... it on different platforms. Yeah, other people can make shooters. So, like, what, what, how is it a monopoly if... We haven't bought the literal concept yeah. of shooters. Can, can we do yeah. that? Can we can we buy the concept of shooters? I mean, it's still fun to have uh, people to occasionally buy. I mean, also, that's... I really like it when we have a dev who's like, I'm never working for this company again. And they throw out the toys out of their pram and then they leave and then we buy the company that they <laughs> run away to. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, yeah. So uh, we haven't bought the concept of shooters. They can still make shooters. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, we'll even not buy all of the shooters. We'll leave at least one shooter we didn't buy. So there's still competition. Yeah, that that uh, that asset pack that people keep buying. It's like, yeah. it's a full game. You can modify it and then no one modifies it and yeah. that 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 that's virtually a franchise on its own yeah well, I we mean, haven't bought that one how, how about this how about this uh we clearly aren't a monopoly because uh 
we we there are things our shooter doesn't do a thimble a boot a top hat there are uh, there are things our shooter doesn't do that other people could do so like there's still room for competition like Someone can make a shooter with a girl in it. Nah. nah but I mean, they could. Oh, so yeah. So it's not a monopoly. I mean, they'd be because, wrong. Yeah, so yeah. We, we haven't made a shooter with a girl in it, so someone else could do that, which means that we haven't monopolized. I, look, I think we got an ironclad case. I don't think anyone can say that we've, uh, we're a monopoly. You are a fucking genius. I know. So... What have you put in your ears? Uh, I'll, I'll put a reasonable number of new songs into my ears this Ooh. week. Um, so, um, uh, 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 drop here for a, for, a sl- for a slur used by a person from that group. Uh, it's a song called Faggot by Sam Vance Law. Um, really neat track. Um, a chaotic folk punk track about someone who, you know... The, the kind of person who goes to church and gets told that they're evil and going to hell for being gay. And the person in the song's response is very sort of, I didn't sign up for Hell's Army. And, you know, you know maybe I could, you know, go to the conversion therapy that you want me to go to and hate myself for life. Or I could just accept that I'm great the way I am. Um, I really like the structure of this song. Um, like halfway through it goes into this very sort of choirish segment in the middle that's like, it feels like trying to deliberately signal at this sort of be what God wants you to be, aim aim for this view of heaven, before it sort of crashes back down into this sort of folk punk energy as he it feels like the singer sort of falling short of, of that thing that they're aiming for. Yeah. Um plays around with like praying to God to be changed and then realizing that being queer is like too deep in you to change. Mm. Um Lyrically, it's like it's very direct. Um, as someone that was this kind of person in my late teens, as I fell out of Christianity, um, lines such as "I love God, but He doesn't love me because I'm a faggot" is like, yeah, yeah, I, I've I've been there. Um, really, like, really creatively interesting track that is like not afraid to shy away from use of language to sort of make a point about like how that sort of internalized homophobia can be when you are in that situation. Yes. It's a really neat track. Yeah. And also reclaiming yeah, slurs. Like reclamation of slurs, exactly. Like mm-hmm. um I also listened to a track called Poison Ivy by a band called Trust Fund Ozu. Uh it is a sort of chaotic electronic piece that uses a lot of like glitching audio, vocal filters, um, and has this sort of very deliberate clash between very upbeat, fast-paced uh, music and at times kind of dark lyrics but sung very upbeat. It It's trying to sort of portray this very self-destructive manic episode where the emotional bounce back and forth between extreme happiness and extreme low can be very rapid and often simultaneous. Mm -hmm. Um, Really interestingly made track with a lot of really creative use of sound in it. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the other one I listened to was a track called Permanent Rebellion by a band called L.S. Dunes, which is a band made up of members from a bunch of other bands. The main group. Yeah, the main one of which I know is... um, Frank Iero from My Chemical Romance is oh, in it. Um, I Fun fact, I learned this band existed uh, the other day. They are playing the same festival as My Chemical Romance this summer, the same day as My Chemical Romance. Ooh, so your day for Frank fire. will be on stage as, as MCR and then a couple of hours later be like, hello, I'm here again. I mean, LS Dunes now. Hi. Um, so yeah, the track is sort of about like trying to reclaim your confidence and d- defend yourself fiercely. Not wanting to have to do things like altering your route home to go the long but safe way, um, live the way that other people want you to, things like that. It is very chaotic, aggressive, fast-paced punk, mm-hmm. but with a fairly polished like um, mix on the sound. Mm-hmm. It is a really nice track. Um, yeah, what about you? What have you listened to oh, this week? Oh, goodness. Well, I listened to that. 
Ah, oh, ah, the the thing on the wall. The thing on the wall. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. <laughs> I love that very few people commented on that, but it did. Well, that's because very few people know. Very few people know, but those who know, they know. Yeah, we've we've, oh, we've told some people in our lives that story. Uh, so it was a two-hour mix uh, <laughs> called Chill Step Mix 2018, square brackets, two hours, uh, on the Mix Hound channel. It's had about 10 million views. Several of them are me. Um, yeah, we listened to this after a really amazing Trans Pride Brighton. Um, yes. <laughs> Like, the first one that we'd gone to with mutual friends, and we have now taken them to many, uh, including this year's. Um, so, and then, like, three o'clock in the morning, they were like, I need something less, less upbeat, uh, Psytrance, and maybe a bit more chill. Yeah. So I put some chill step on, and, um... The background image that they use for that, we now have a print of on the wall. Um, and if you know, you know. And um, yeah, it's it's just a beautiful track with a lot of really nice um, chill step, including Killer Grew, Human, a track I nearly broke my ankle trying to <laughs> rush around to find my phone to take a picture of the screen yeah. to see the time code because I couldn't see straight. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was a night. It was a whole day. It was so it, long. It went on. It, that was the twenty-four hours that existed. <laughs> oh yes. Oh. Um, have you listened to anything else? Or should I keep? Uh, no, can you keep going? I think I think that's mainly it for me. Listen to a bunch of ABBA. Ooh. It's, it's ABBA. Yeah. I wanted some disco. I got some disco. Disco happened. Disco good. I enjoy disco. Uh, I listened to a bunch of Kitsune Squared. I think I've mentioned them before. Uh, giant Enemy Crab. I think somebody mentioned Giant Enemy Crabs, which immediately put that track in my head. Yeah. It's kind of um, techno-y, I guess. Like, very aggy techno, uh, with the Giant Enemy Crab sample in it. That got me onto uh, Noise Channel Rocker, which is also on the Square Dance um, album. And it is... Um, yeah, it's just a... Oh God, what would you even call it? I guess it's just chip tune. It's it's a really nice upbeat track. Big mm. fan of that. Very much enjoyed it. Um, what else? Oh, so I listened to uh, the Shia LaBeouf live video again. Yes. I guess this should have come under watched, but um, yeah, I don't know what brought it back into my feed today, mm. but I clicked on it because I was like, I remember this from. Whatever year that happened. I look, I'm gonna hazard a guess and say a decade plus ago at this point. Probably, I feel like Probably it was like one of the very early I have internet now Yes type things. Because I like I missed so much there's like there's memes that you and a lot of your friends know and I just like I I don't know this and you're like, You should know this. You're old enough to have known this. There was a whole period where I could not afford internet. Yeah. So I just didn't have it and there are a lot of memes from that era that I just don't know. Mm. Um so yeah, that's definitely one from the I did actually have internet at this point. Um And it is so just startlingly produced for something that is essentially just a joke that went on for a really long time. Yep. Yep. Um, I think that is probably all the important stuff that I've listened to this week. I say important. It's the things I've listened to this week. Some more ABBA, please. Maybe next week. Um, <laughs> well then. Well, time for this. Right, right. Everyone settle down, please. Settle down. Okay, okay, okay. So, as you know, we have had a bit of a, a bit of a marketing shift recently. Yeah. We've been looking for yeah. some more options. Yeah places to sort of farm out our product in a way that is uh, more acceptable to society. So I think what we really need to do is see how effective we can make uh, the, the Bobcat Marketing Board. We, I mean, we are the Bob, Bobcat Marketing Board. We need to find out how we can make Bobcats more acceptable. I mean, I, I feel like the bigger thing is we just make it sort of not a big deal that it's a bobcat, you it's see. It's not a big deal. It's exactly. Look at the little bobcat. It's yes. adorable. Yes. Why not bobcats? Uh, bobcats are adorable. Yes. 
I very mean, sweet. Very indeed. Fun. Have you seen a baby bobcat? They're so, so exactly. adorable. And like, you know, just tiny little asterisks, tiny little text. It's barely imperceptible. Just a, uh, they're adorable. Only a little bit murdery. Only a little bit murdery. Only a little That's bit not murdery. very murdery I mean, at all. Like, look, we, if we have to say it out loud, we could like, you know, have the bobcat doing like an, I was going to say a roar, but it probably doesn't help our case. An adorable baby one doing a little, it's only a little murdery. Yeah, yeah, I mean, a... look at this bobcat kitten. Look at that. That's adorable. Exactly. How could that murder you? you should I mean, I, just... c- I do have diagrams of how it could murder you. Yes, but we you... don't show them in the advert. No, no, we no. Go, we go. It looks so adorable. You can't conceive of something that cute killing you. And look at his prob- little paws. It'll probably be that cute forever and never yes. grow. What if we could get... What if, what if we brought bobcats into the home? More <gasps> households having their bobcat as their own. Exactly. Uh, it's adorable. It's adorable. It will be forever. Don't worry about it. Exactly. Uh, can we get uh, Bubsy on board? Oh. As you know, like, nostalgia thing. Yes. You, Ooh, the people who remember you, Bubsy the Bobcat. Some of you remember Bubsy the Bobcat. Maybe from their even, youths. Maybe, maybe even favorably. Why not get your grandchild? Uh, or, or, or child, I guess, yeah. uh, depending on how old you are. I'm, Why not get your grandchild an adorable Bobcat, just like Bubsy? Exactly. I'm sure they'll wear a t-shirt and a baseball cap just like Bubsy did. Probably. Prob- probably, probably. 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 I think I think that's a good day's work done. I think we're good to go. Only a little bit murdery. Only a little bit So this is some kind of um, symposium about, uh, about happiness. Uh, yep, definitely. Yeah. Definitely an official symposium I've convinced you to uh, come to. Uh, now, welcome everyone to uh, this 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 talk I'm putting on for very important, very smart, important billionaires. Hey, Bill, how's it going? Right. Uh, uh, the the point of today's talk is is that uh, I I imagine some of you have at some point in your life uh, said something to the effect of money can't buy happiness i mean i've certainly told a few of my employees that <laughs> right yeah you've told you right you get it yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you've told them that you know having money and spending money doesn't make you happy and therefore they shouldn't worry about having it i mean money's never made me happy well see i i have a radical new concept i think that money can buy happiness i think that money can buy happiness by spending it and I'm not talking about like buying yourself another home that you're not going to live in, another or yacht, another, another yacht, and not another, another yacht you're not going to ride that has a bunch of rooms you're never going to use. Hey, uh, that's for when the big one comes. Well, see, here's what I'm going to radically suggest. I think you've not spent enough of your money. I don't think you've spent it in the right places. I think if you spend way more of your money, if you spend basically every penny you own, uh, on small businesses, small independent creators, like lots and lots of transactions to to small companies, just buying every tiny little thing that your brain can think of. So I buy up all these small companies. No, 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 You you buy just little things from them. Like, hey, that person makes art, Pay them, like, a hundred thousand dollars to do a weird niche bit of art that makes no sense that you want to see in the world. And then I mint that as an NFT. Nope, you just have it. You just have the piece of art and that's that. Right. You go to a you go to a fancy artisanal cheese shop. I you love just, cheeses. You you just buy a big fancy cheese and just eat some cheese. And you go from a little family cheese shop. You just spend all of the money, all of it, all of the money. Right. And, and you know you might think this isn't working. You would spend a lot of your money and you're like, it's, it's not buying me happiness yet. It's not buying me happiness. Yet. You just haven't spent enough of it. Spend all of your money. Right. So this is like the whole NFT thing. We stick with the program. We keep going. We go all the way. Yeah. Yeah. All the way. All, all the way. way. You, uh, by the end of this, you should have none of the money, and all of the, all all of those little tiny small businesses. They sh- you should have spent it all on them, and right. you'll finally be happy. Right. And like. If, if if you know you you've you've all said for for so long it's so easy to make money you know oh yeah even if you spend all of it it'll you spend all of it it'll make you happy just make some more you can probably do that and then spend it all then again. I can be happy and a billionaire yeah and then spend it all again this is great yeah spend it and don't hoard it in bank accounts it'll be great I'm going all the way 
all the way. Don't be a coward. Don't quit the system. We're going to make it straight to the moon. I'm going there next week. Do you know what I want to see more of? What do you want to see more of? Brochure Justice Warriors. Brochure Justice Warriors? Yeah. All right, Larry. All right, Barry. How you doing? Oh, a minor injury, mate, but, uh, you know, holding up you, you've been up to much. Uh, you know, I've been, uh, I've been doing, uh, paying attention to uh, accessibility and disability social media oh, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. seeing the latest bullshit going on there. Oh, uh, God, what's it now? Yeah, yeah, so uh, you know how, you know, in, like, airports and uh, things like that, accommodations are not particularly... Uh, there's not a lot of them. Sometimes you've got to wait around for a while, you know, if you want to get, you know, legitimate help for a disability getting through an airport. Yeah, I've, I mean, I've heard about people getting off planes has been a real big problem. I've, yeah, I've been you know, hearing a lot reported recently. People people not, uh, you know, not having uh, wheelchairs where, when they're supposed to and being stuck for hours on pla- sat around on planes. Yeah. Having their wheelchairs damaged or broken because... Especially people electric were in, ones, yeah. Yeah, people were in too much of a rush to properly, you know, take care of them, things like that. There has been a fucking disgusting trend going around recently. Oh, yeah. I shouldn't have to say it's disgusting, but fucking hell. Um, there's been a bunch of people discovering an airport hack, in inverted quotes. I don't where, like where this is going, mate. Uh, they, they, uh, usually this is like early 20s lads on social media will fake a disability in order to skip queues at an airport. Wow. Yeah, yeah, they'll like, you know, uh, things like try and find a pair of crutches somewhere and sort of hobble sort of near a thing and uh, be like, oh, I need, I need someone to wheel me and avoid the lines and just take me straight to the gate. Just fucking inventing illnesses and injuries to, uh, you know, to, to cut cues, which is bad enough on its fucking own. I'm not a great believer in afterlife, but those people no. should go to hell. But like, specifically, look, it's a fucking shitty thing at the best of times, but like, the problem it's causing is you've got people with disabilities uh, who have been regular users of accessibility services in airports suddenly going, I'm going to airports and routinely finding that there are no wheelchairs available because there has been a like sudden unexpected uptick in people requesting them. And from what we can tell, it's a bunch of social media people who learned from social media this fast hack for skipping the queues. And Ugh. it's fucking, like, it fucking boils my blood back people disgust me i'll be honest yeah like it's the problem is like you can't have a fucking good thing without someone taking abuse of it because like yeah. in a perfect world we sh- you know in a perfect world disability accommodation should not be a thing that someone has to show you know proof of disability to gain oh, access no, absolutely to. not you know no one should be having to carry their papers around about a disability in a perfect world we should be able also to work- i mean we live in a country where the term registered disabled is not Really a thing. Exactly. And like, you know, in a perfect world, we should be in a state where the honour system, as it has done for years, should be enough that, like, if someone tells you they need accessibility accommodations, you provide them, and that's just that. But people like this seriously create a risk of uh, uh, people being expected to start proving they are disabled enough to need accommodations at the point of access. Because some people are abusing the system, and it's and actually disabled people already have enough problems with the fucking DWP. Exactly, um, exactly. It's it's fucking infuriating, and I've got no real suggestions for this. I just need to get it off my chest. Oh, cause, uh, yeah, I understand. You know, you sometimes see a thing like that, and you're just like, I just need to vent about it. Oh yeah, fuck that bullshit. Fuck them. Yeah, if, if if anyone out there does that, you are you are you are a scam. You're you're a piece of sh- you're a piece of shit. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ugh. Hang, mate. Oh, please. <sighs> yeah. Good hug, mate. Good, Good hug. hug. Right, I'll uh, go put a kettle on. Oh, go have a nice lie down, I reckon. No, no. So, Laura. Which yeah. book are we advertising first? It's probably uh, the book that's out, I guess. I, I guess. Uh, Me and my Dysphoria Monster. That's out now. Go check it out. Children's book. It's about trans stuff. Go check it out. It's adorable. We got a book coming up. We do. Tell us about that one. That one's called Who Hunts the Whale? Uh, it's by us together. That it is. You're out the outline and I went fleshy. Yeah. Fleshy, 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 fleshy. Um, yeah. It's, uh, it is about 
Supremacy Software, basically. What is it like working at Supremacy Software? That book isn't defi- definitely isn't the reason that we had to change the name of the company. Definitely not. Uh, because the lawyers were like, no. <laughs> change the name of the company. So we did. So yeah. you know when we started writing this book, and when, or, or at least when the lawyers got to it, because yeah. <laughs> um, you'll know which episode yeah, we Suprem- changed. Supremacy Software started being a thing right at the time where... <laughs> Like, look, maybe it'll be less stress if we change the name of the company. Maybe. And maybe yeah. we will refuse to publish this if we don't change the name of it. Fine. So there you go. Um, yeah, it's about what it's like to work in the boardroom with with, uh, with, with, with those people having those ideas. And trying to work out whether how they can try and save all the people, maybe. Yeah. Or whether or not they're just going to save their own skin. Who knows? Very important stuff. I'm very excited for this book. You can get it at unbound.com slash book slash whale. Yeah. Uh, you can't get your name in the book anymore because that is closed. Uh, that time has passed. But you can you can still pre-order it. You, you can still, still get, get all signed the good copy. Stuff. You can get yeah. some backer awards. Yeah. If you, you know, it'll be out at some point in the nearish future. In the nearish future. Um, if you if you go look and you might, you might be able to get a sense of that. Are we not um, allowed to say? I mean... I, d- I if don't you, know. If you go on Look, big bookstores, then yeah. you will see it. Look, if you Google the the, the book, there is. If a you di- go on the Unbound page, it yeah. will tell you. Oh, does it list it on the Unbound page as well? That's where I first saw it. Oh well, in that case, there is a date floating around for it then. Yeah. Um, I didn't know it was on the Unbound one. I like I thought it was in the weird middle ground that sometimes happens where the publisher hasn't said it, but it's listed on the bookshops. Weird. because uh, usually that'll be it's on like an ISBN number uh... fact sheet somewhere. Um, yeah, you can definitely order it. But hey, if you order it through, like, pre-order it through Unbound, you'll probably get it about, like, a month to six weeks before that date. Yeah. So, ooh. Yeah. Nice. I guess I know what I'm going to spend my birthday doing. <laughs> Signing books. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, what else? Where, where else can we find you on the internet? Tell us those things. Uh, you can find me at Laura K. Buzz pretty much everywhere. Uh, every week there's new episodes of Access Ability up on YouTube. Um, uh, all sorts of things I do on the internet, Podquisition, Dice Funk, all those things. Just go search Laura K. Bells, you'll find all the things. What about you? Me, I can be found at uh, linkter.ee slash janiac, J-A-N-E-I-A-C. My most important one is patreon.com slash radio. For as little as a dollar a month, you can help me justify all the overtime I do. Uh, <laughs> and, um, for, 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 for the nice people who support me. I very much appreciate all of the people who support me. They're all very lovely. And you can join them. If you want to support me a lot, mm. like $10 a month a lot, you can get early access to Queer and Pleasant Strangers. You can do that. You are, in fact, one of those yeah. one of those high-level Tatoes. You could join Laura. You could be just like Laura and be support me. Be just like me. <laughs> Don't you want to be like me? I do. <gasps> yeah. I want to be alert and creative and very, very cute. <gasps> Oh, uh, that's, like that's you the... describing me. <laughs> I wouldn't like to keep the pink hair, though. <laughs> <laughs> for the butt. Oh, I'd kill for the butt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that's everything. So, Laura, will you sing us out, please, darling? Until next time, be a stranger. Be a stranger.